Are you looking to build your own website and confused as to which hosting provider you should go with? With all of the available options nowadays and all the technical lingo, it can be a real pain to know which is the best option for you. Whatever the case may be, the goal of this video is not only to list out my personal recommendations for hosting companies out there, but it's also to teach you how to choose the best hosting plan for you. Now, I do have a few options on my list that I'm going to go over and explain which I prefer and for those specific reasons, but for those of you who are impatient, at the end of the day, my strong recommendation would be Hostinger for anyone who's looking to build a simple, small to medium sized website with good speeds, respectable bandwidth, and the most affordable price. And I do mean the most affordable price. If that's all you were looking for, then cheers. If you continue watching, you'll see the reasons why I chose this hosting provider, as well as learn a lot more about how to choose your own hosting plan and not just take my word for it. Before I start comparing plans, I wanted to talk a little bit about some background information about web hosting so you're up to date and able to decide for yourself which plan is right for you. I want to talk about the different types of hosting plans that you can sign up for, as well as the features to pay attention to when you're shopping around for which plan. Now, if you want to skip over all of this information and just go straight to the hosting comparisons, go ahead and click on the timestamp that's going to be over here, or maybe it's over there, it could just be right here, I don't remember where I'm going to put it. When you're looking at web hosting, it's important to understand the features that you're getting for the price that you're paying. I'm going to be going over the basics of how to at least understand what the web hosting company is saying when they're telling you everything that they're offering. Am I making sense here? Basically, by the end of this portion of the video, I want you to be able to look at a pricing table like the one that you're seeing now and be able to understand all of the gibberish that's down below. Now, here's the deal. It's time to be real with you again. I mean, I haven't stopped being real with you, but you guys understand what I mean. There's no way that I could go down this list and give you a full web developer course in just five or 10 minutes. Being able to tell you how each and every one of these features work would take hours to explain, and people literally go to school to earn degrees about all of this. But don't worry, your friendly neighborhood Levi is here to save the day. I'm going to briefly go over the most important ones that are pertinent to someone looking to purchase a hosting plan like yourself. So let's take a look. The first one is websites, which is pretty self-explanatory. With different plans, you're going to have a different number of websites under one account. This can be nice if you plan on having multiple websites that you manage. SSD storage just means solid state drive storage as opposed to HDD, which is kind of a thing of the past now, but basically means hard drive storage. A hard drive is a physical disk that you actually write data onto, where SSDs don't even have a disk. They're faster, more efficient, powerful, and just better in every way than an HDD. Now, today, pretty much every hosting provider out there offers SSD storage, so you don't really have to worry about it. Now, bandwidth refers to the amount of data that can go through your hosting account. Basically, think of it like it's a water pipe. A larger pipe allows more water to flow through and a smaller pipe allows less water to flow through. The amount of bandwidth you have determines how quickly your website can deliver content to your visitors during peak traffic times. If you're building a website that you plan on making really popular and running a lot of traffic with paid ads, you might want to consider bandwidth. But if you're just creating a simple business website for people to get in contact with you, then this might not be a big deal for you. Free domain registration is always a huge plus because this is basically just giving you a discount on something that you already have to purchase no matter what. When you build a website, you need to get a domain name, which is like getting your own phone number. And then you also have to get web hosting, which is like signing up for a phone bill so you can actually call people with the phone you just got. So free domain registration is just giving you 12 months free on your custom domain name. A free SSL certificate is also a huge plus. Most hosting companies will provide you with an SSL certificate and some companies will actually offer you them for free. No matter what, you have to have an SSL certificate nowadays. This is the encryption and security for your website and it also provides the little lock symbol up here in the top left corner when you go to a website. If you don't have an SSL certificate, then it will show not secure and that would make anyone want to leave your website. I recommend going with a hosting company that gives it to you for free. Now, daily backups means that they're going to be saving a backup of your website every single day. So if your website crashes or gets deleted by accident or something like that, they have a copy of it so they can put it right back up for you. This is a huge lifesaver and I always recommend trying to get this done or by doing it yourself. The uptime guarantee is pretty important as well. It's widely accepted that you should look for an uptime that is at least 99.5% or higher. This means that your website is up and available for people to visit 99.5% of the time. Obviously 24 seven technical support is a big deal because there's always gonna be things that go wrong with your website. 
Sometimes you'll forget your password or there's a bug that you need worked out. It could be anything, but having technical support is really helpful. The rest of these get pretty technical, so I'm gonna skip over them, but this should give you a pretty good understanding of what to look for when you're looking at your first hosting account and what you should expect. The last thing that I wanna cover is the duration or term of hosting. Most hosting companies have different pricing based on the amount of time that you pay for your hosting upfront. This can be handy if you only plan on experimenting and you want a shorter term to just try things out, but honestly, I always recommend choosing the 12 month plan or higher. You not only save more money and get a bigger discount this way, but you also guarantee that your site stays live through the duration of your domain name's life. Generally, when you get a custom domain name for your website, you're gonna be paying for 12 months at a time. So it usually makes sense to get your hosting plan that matches the domain term as well. There's nothing worse than having your domain name still active, but your hosting is expired and your website visitors are greeted with a beautiful page that says, this page cannot be found, 404 error. There's three important metrics to pay attention to when you're trying to choose a hosting plan that I didn't mention. Server response time, page speed, and uptime. These are pretty technical, so I made it easy for you. Page speed is just referring to the time it takes for your website to load when someone opens it. You want the lowest number possible. Uptime is the reliability of your website. Basically, it just tells you the percentage of time that it's actually available for people to look at it. So you want this number to be as high as possible. And lastly, you have server response time, which tells you how long it takes for your web browser to receive a response from the server that your website is stored on. All of the hosting companies on my list are above the recommended standards for all three of these metrics. So you don't even need to worry about it. All right, enough of that. It's time to start comparing hosting companies so I can lay out the pros and cons of all of them. And I'm gonna be comparing the features that we just discussed as well as a few others. All right, let's get started. Now, as I mentioned at the beginning of the video, Hostinger is my personal recommendation, but it's also the first one that I wanted to talk about because Hostinger is actually becoming one of the top hosting providers out there, in my opinion. But don't just take my word for it. Hostinger even got recognized by Bitcatcha and PCMag as one of the fastest growing web hosting companies in the industry which is saying something. It does just about everything that all the other hosting providers do simply at a more reasonable price. It's got great speeds and has double the Google recommended full load time for a website, which is two seconds. Its stability is also up to par, having an uptime of 99.9%. .9%. That basically means that your website is almost up 100% of the time, which is a big deal. It's got page load speeds hovering around 1.4 seconds, which is under the two second recommendation from Google. It's also perfectly integrated with WordPress, so they have a one-click installation process. I mean, look at this. You're going through the process of checking out for your hosting plan, and right before you choose your domain name, you can install WordPress in the background with one simple click. Boom, done. Now WordPress is downloading while I set up my domain name. This is just super easy and saves a whole bunch of time. Now with all that tech stuff out of the way, let's talk about what you get with your hosting plan. Now they have their low cost plan starting at 199, which aggressively competes with all of the other hosting companies, but I strongly recommend their premium plan at 299 per month because you can have 100 websites under your account. You get 100 gigabytes of storage, unlimited bandwidth, a free domain name for one year and a free SSL certificate. You also get weekly backups for your website so you can rest easy. And of course you also have the 24 seven support as well. Lastly, you get up to 100 email accounts set up under your domain name. So if your domain is something like mywebsite.com, then your email could be levi at mywebsite.com or support at mywebsite.com. And Hostinger is perfect for the beginner to web design with its intuitive and clean H panel. You can easily find everything you need and make the adjustments to the back end of your website. And if you don't know how to do something or you get stuck on one of your settings, Hostinger support is always there to walk you through what you need. So it's pretty fantastic. Hostinger also operates in 40 different markets and you can get local language support if you're from another part of the world. Overall, for the price that you're paying, you're getting a huge deal with great service. This is my new favorite hosting provider and it's the one that you're gonna see me use a lot more often on the channel for all my tutorials and future clients as well. If you decide that you wanna use Hostinger for your hosting provider, be sure to click on that first link in the description and use the coupon code CREATEAPROWEBSITE at the beginning of your checkout because you get an insane deal if you use my affiliate link which gives you 78% off, just for my viewers. 
HostGator is another great option to house your website and we've recommended it on the channel for years. I personally have nothing but great things to say about HostGator and the deals that they provide for their cheaper plans definitely saves you a lot of money. At 264 a month, you get unmetered storage and bandwidth, within reason of course, a free SSL certificate, one year domain registration for free, and unlimited free email accounts for your website. Now, when I say within reason, what I mean is, in their terms of service, they say to only utilize disk space and bandwidth in the normal operation of a personal or small business website. So basically, unmetered storage and bandwidth doesn't mean you have unlimited space and unlimited bandwidth. Just keep that in mind. But the free SSL certificate is obviously a necessity. The free one-year domain registration is also something to look for, and unlimited free email accounts is pretty nice. They don't offer site backups for your website, but I've got videos on the channel that show you guys how to do this for free. They also have 24-7 support, which is a must in my opinion. So compared to Hostinger's premium plan, you're paying for about the same per month, but you're getting a lot of stuff added on for free. Just something to consider. Bluehost is another great option and fantastic hosting provider that costs a little bit more than HostGator. At $295 per month, you're getting 50 gigabytes of SSD storage, unmetered bandwidth, which you guys all know what that means, and a free SSL certificate and domain registration. But the SSL certificate and domain registration is only free for the first year. After that, you have to pay for both the SSL and the domain. So it's a bit of a downside. At least you're getting the first year free, but other hosting providers offer free SSL certificates indefinitely. So that's another cost that you're gonna have to take into account. Unfortunately, with Bluehost, you don't get site backups either. Now, Bluehost is one of the most popular hosting companies out there. They did this by being one of the first companies to have an affiliate program. So you had a bunch of people like me, YouTubers and social media influencers or bloggers promoting their services. This caused their popularity to grow exponentially since they were one of the first. Bluehost is also one of the three hosting companies officially recommended by WordPress, so that's also something to keep in mind. Now, if you're looking to get started with Bluehost, but you want to start off small and just pay for a month or something like that, rather than 12 or 36 months, then you're out of luck. Bluehost only offers a 12-month and a 36-month hosting plan, unlike many of the other hosting companies where you can choose a shorter package. One thing I've noticed is that their service has also gotten a little bit slower for websites nowadays, and I think it's just because of how big the company's gotten. Keep in mind, the larger a company gets, many times can reflect how quick they can get back to a simple customer service request as well. SiteGround is another great option for a hosting company for your website, but they're definitely not the cheapest. They have moderate prices, but nothing too overpriced. For $3.99 a month, you'll get 10 gigabytes of web space, a free SSL certificate, and surprisingly enough, free daily backups for your website, which is a huge plus in my opinion. You get unlimited email accounts and unlimited bandwidth, within reason. Overall, it's a very solid option, it's just not the cheapest. They definitely do a great job, and I would argue that SiteGround is a quality option that you can expect incredibly fast page speeds. One of the fastest, actually. However, in order to get this ridiculous speed, you have to pay a lot more. The last hosting provider that I wanted to talk to you guys about was GoDaddy, and I want to be straight up with you. I would recommend that you just stay away from this hosting provider. It may be one of the most popular that you've heard of, but let me tell you why I tell my clients to avoid it at all costs. To start, their customer service has never really been that great or helpful. This can be very frustrating if your site goes down and you're losing money waiting to get in contact with tech support. It's also the most expensive option on our list today. You pay a whopping $5.99 per month for your hosting plan, and even after that, you still end up having to pay for a bunch of additions like an SSL certificate, which most other hosting companies provide for free. I've noticed that you just always end up spending a lot more money with GoDaddy, and you're not really getting that much out of it. It's certainly not a bad hosting provider, there's just much better options available nowadays. Listen guys, at the end of the day, my recommendation is still Hostinger because it's absolutely hands down the perfect option for someone who's a beginner or intermediate to web design. If you're building a site for yourself or for a small business, or maybe you're trying to become a freelancer for building small websites for people, you'll definitely want to check out Hostinger because they're a fantastic company and provide quality service just across the board. Not only have you guys heard my recommendation for the top hosting company out there, but now you guys, by the end of this video, should have enough knowledge to make your 
own decision for yourself. Now, if you're looking to get started with your own web hosting today, be sure to click on the link in the top left corner where I give you a massive discount on your hosting plan with my coupon code. And if you already purchased your domain and hosting and you're looking to build your first website but not sure how to do it, then click on the video in the top right corner where I guide you through how to build any kind of website from start to finish in just one hour.